Hi, today we have Simon Morris, CEO of Genetic Technologies, which trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol G-E-N-E. -E. Simon, thanks for being with us once again. Thanks for having me, Craig. It's great to be here. We love having you. You recently reported commercial samples received for your gene type multi-risk test jumped 250% between the first and second quarters this year. What can you tell us about the test and its extraordinary growth? Well, it's a fantastic achievement for the team, and it's been a long time in the making. So we've spent the first 20 years investing so much effort in research and development and innovation. And the last two years, we've been all of our energy has been spent on the commercialization and creating those pathways. And in the last couple of quarters, we've really started to see those physicians adopt those tests and bring them to market, hence the growth on the prior quarter. Now, I have to say, it's off a modest base, but it's absolutely fantastic to see those green shoots starting to really adopt. Sounds fascinating, Simon. Tell us, how big is the market opportunity for your gene type test? Well, the addressable market for us with the nine different diseases that we have in the gene type test, we have six for oncology, two for cardiovascular, and one for metabolic disease type 2 diabetes. The addressable market for us is enormous. So in the United States and in Australia alone, it's in the billions of dollars. So if you're 30 years of age or older, you're eligible to take this test and then understand your own individual risk of getting one of those serious diseases well before onset so you can plan your surveillance with your doctors well in advance to drive that early detection. So the addressable market is absolutely huge for us uh, going forward. You recently announced a planned pilot study with an employer group. What will success with this pilot program mean for the company moving forward? Yeah, we're having some fantastic conversations with payer groups, hospitals, insurance companies, and employers right across the United States and in Australia. What this means for the organization is successful implementation of these pilot studies will lead to a brand new standard of care for individuals and really driving that early detection of that serious disease. And we know that early detection of serious disease will absolutely save lives. So it has an incredible opportunity to reshape the way precision medicine and preventative healthcare is absolutely delivered around the world. Let's talk about your business model now, Simon. How does Genetic Technologies make money? So we have three distinct selling channels. We have a business-to-business -business model, which focuses on the payers, the general practitioners, the physicians, the specialists, the insurers and the payers. That's our business-to-business -business model, focusing on serious disease, focusing on the gene type brand. We have a consumer-initiated panel there where consumers can go online, they can buy the test, and the doctors or a telehealth function will deliver the reports and the results back to the patient. And we have a direct-to-consumer model which focuses on our easy DNA and affinity DNA brands. They are the three channels in which we operate. We also have licensing models, whether we in-license or out-license our tests. We have direct selling models, and we're moving into the reimbursement space down the track. So three distinct channels and three distinct revenue models for us, for our business going forward. You know, Simon, especially with microcap companies, investors want to get to know the management team. Introduce us to the genetic technologies team, please. You're absolutely right, Craig. The foundation of the success of this organization is absolutely built on the management team, starting with a supportive board, supportive board that helps and get involved in developing the vision and the strategy of the organization that then supports the team in building the right execution plan to, to, for us to achieve that vision. The executive team, my direct reports across the world uh, in, in, in the United States, our director of clinical and scientific affairs, Dr. Erica Spaeth. We have a chief medical officer based in Connecticut, uh, Dr. John Levins. We have our chief commercial officer based in Sydney, Carl Stubbings, and our chief financial officer and company secretary based in Melbourne here, Tony DiPietro. Those four critical stakeholders are absolutely pivotal in helping us achieve our execution plans. We've just put on a new marketing team in the United States as well, and a new marketing agency to help us execute the vision for us for the future about becoming leaders 
in preventative health and precision medicine. So the depth of talent in our organization in clinical, scientific, sales and marketing is growing by the week. And we're really excited about the future of this organization. Now, in summary, Simon, give us the essential value proposition. Why should investors take an interest in genetic technologies right now? Well, the future of precision medicine is absolutely here right now. The gene type risk assessment tests can improve the health of populations worldwide through early detection of serious disease. Where there may be no family history, we integrate genetic and clinical risk factors through AI and machine learning technologies. So early detection will save lives, and we're seeing this implemented across practices around the United States and Australia every single week. And we know that early detection will save lives and it's absolutely essential to know your risk. So we are at the cutting edge and the forefront of precision medicine and preventative health care. It's a wonderful story, Simon. I love to hear it from you. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks, Craig. It's great to be here.